100 pounder with his back out of the water. Can you see him? Yeah. It was just cool to see, to see the two of them out there, and it didn't matter if we you know, played in the bait well all day or catch fish or, or what, whatever we did, but just to spend the day with the kids, you know, devote our time all day with those two kids. Those things are the best bait stealers in the world. Not that got time. Him. Here we he got, got him. him. Check this thing out, Hannah. He's a big one. Woo. Yes, look at that guy. That is a shark. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. You want to help him get yeah, out of there? No, I took the pictures off. He, so he's safe now. He can't hurt you. Here you go. Feed the pincher to the tarp. Go out there. Oh! He ate that. I hope the fishing's as good out there where we're going as it is here. There's a stingray. Nope, I took the pincher off of him. He just went under the boat. He's going to come right over here. There he is. All right. Okay, let's close this up until we get to the fishing spot. You ready to go? Yeah. You want to drive? Yeah. All right. That was yeah. really great to get our uh, our youngest kids out there and do a little fishing with them. We always get to take the big boys, and it's the first time we got uh, Hannah and Reed together. That was really cool. No doubt, man. Hannah is at an age that is just perfect. This is this is the time. I mean, she has so much fun. She's she's so uh, good natured right now, and. She loves fishing. She loves it, you know. I take her fishing, you know, in freshwater, saltwater, all over the place. She loves it. And um, when I told her that, that we were going to do this, she was really excited. One of the things she was excited about is that she was going to go with Reed. And Reed's, you know, younger, and Hannah has a maternal instinct, you know. She feels like, oh, cool, I'm going to get to show him what to do, and we're going to have some fun. And, and they did. They know? got they, along great. That, they, was, that was really neat. It was, uh, you know, just cool to see, see the two of them out there. And, you know, just, just to go out there and, and, and do whatever it took, you know. We knew we were just going to go out and have fun. didn't matter if we, you know, played in the bait well all day or catch fish or, or what, whatever we did, but just to spend the day with the kids, you know, devote our time all day with those two kids. Hey, what are we going to catch today? Nothing. Okay, let's go out and That's catch easy. nothing. We can go swimming instead. No. Or we can go walk on the beach. Or we can do lots of stuff. We've already had fun playing in the bait, right? What about you, Reed? What do you want? What do you want to catch? I think fish, he might fish just, that are your size. He might be ready okay. to take a little nappy. Great. That's what happens when you bring Buddy. Just go back, right back into La La Land. All right, let's put these rods down and go under the bridge here. One of the things that I think fishing does for you really well is that any time I feel like any time you're able to spend with your child is is good time. But the thing about fishing and going out on the boat is all you got to do is convince them that this is a fun thing to do, right? And get them on the boat. And then once you leave that dock, something changes because they're not going back, they're not getting distracted by a television screen somewhere or something else. You know, it is real one-on-one -on -one time. You know, it's, it's all about the bait, you know, or all about what we're fishing for, all about anything. And, you know, sometimes those good conversations and those, those experiences that I've had with my kids that are real, cornerstones to our relationship have been on the boat when we stop fishing and we just kind of sit there and look at something. Maybe it's a bird or an alligator or a shark eats something or, and we just start talking. And those are some of the best times that I've ever had with you know my whole family and, and it's special because you get out away from the dock, you're away from everything and you know you, it's, you take advantage of that time because it's, it's really, really special. Look at his whole tail out of it. It's a hundred pounder, Tom. It's a hundred pounder with his back out of the water. Okay, maybe I'll throw a little bit bigger crab. You, you see him? Yeah. Just Anna, you, wanted, you wanted small fish, but we found you a big one. That's all right. He likes to watch and help catch the big ones, too. Let's stay Everybody real too. quiet. Two fish. Two Let's of try them. to stay real quiet for just a second. Hey, Reed, watch him. For kids that are that are young, like Reed, or even, even Hannah's age, you know, 
their end result is not catching fish. And as a parent, that's one of the things that you want to want to be be cognizant of is that you know the end result is definitely not how many fish you can catch. It's what kind of experience can I show this child so that they're excited about going again. You know, because the the overall result is make them get them excited so that you create a fishing partner for life. Yeah, right here, right next to the boat. See him? Three of them. Four of them. Look at that. Look at that. That was cool, cool huh? You see that off, Reed? The carpenter didn't didn't want to eat. That's cool. I wonder if they were in here looking for these pilchards. They're um, hitting this bowl and just circling around. I think those are those migratory. You never know what you'll see. <laughs> the Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. All the fun of the Florida Keys in one island resort. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By Mercury Marine. Lawrence, makers of HDS, high definition systems. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Sperry Topsider, a passion for the sea. And by Loadmaster, Power Pole, Corrosion Block, Ocean LED, and Tough Line. Getting out there that day with Reed, you know, first thing I that I love to do is catch a lot of bait. And, yes. and, and I was like, you know, you want to spend a little time doing that? And that morning, I remember it was funny because I called you on the phone. I was like, Tom, you want to go out and meet uh, at, at 6 a.m.? You and I will go catch the bait and then we'll pick the kids up at the dock a little later. Well, I called you back in 10 minutes because Reed, I told him that I'm going to go catch bait early with Tom and then I'll pick you up. And he did not like that idea. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that, that he went and caught bait with us. Yeah, uh, so, good. So I called you right back and said, um, Reed's coming at seven. Well, there's a lot of good things about that. You know, you can't make it too easy for the kids. I mean, you want to make it easy. You want to make it productive, but you also want them to have the experience. You know, let's go catch the bait and let's throw the net and let's see what what else we catch. I mean, maybe you catch a crab or a trigger fish or a box fish or you know who knows what's going to come in the net. And that's really part of the whole fishing experience. We got them all right. Perfect snappers. Alright, Reed. Look at all those we fishies, Reed. You know what that means, Hannah? It means we are gonna catch some fish now. Alright, those love, are perfect for I love the little little pilchards. <laughs> There's a lot of time with a little kid where their head is buried in the live well. Some people get upset about that, you know, and they want they think, ah, oh, they're missing it, you know, check out all the fish, but they're not missing anything, man. They're on their boat, they're having a good time. They're, they're, they're experiencing something, you know? And if you say, let's go fishing next time, and they say, oh yeah, cool, I get to play in the live well. Hey, whatever, man, that's great. You know, let them play in the live well, let them do whatever. When it's a young kid, man, they don't care. Just let them do whatever they want to do, you know? And, and that's how you develop a, a, a real fisherman, in my opinion. Gonna get these guys out of here. That's where they went, right back there. I just saw a few snook. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh she's got another one. Real, you got him. Get him, Hannah. Oh, by yourself. Awesome. Lift him up. Oh, that's a good one. Nice snapper. And it was cool to have that well full of bait, go try a couple different things. We went up near the mangroves there. Like I said, we saw some snook under there, um, threw it under, and, and you know, you were getting excited about the snook. I was getting excited about the snook. And they didn't care about that. It was that cowfish. Remember that cowfish that you box and I would, 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 have, would have ignored? That boxfish sw swam up there. You know, you threw at him and he ate your shrimp off and had him on for a second, and then and then that boxfish was sitting there. You know, and I kept I kept throwing it in there and watching that boxfish come right up to the surface, and the kids could see it, and, and it was so interesting. Here, look at this. See this cool fish? You come right up to the surface and eat this. Now get him go. Well, I mean, what you just said is accurate. You know, there were bonefish there, there were tarpon there, you know, there's snook there, whatever. But the boxfish was interesting. And for the kids, I mean, it's fun, it's interesting, and it's, and it's uh, something that they've never caught before. That's what they're into. Absolutely. And if that's what's cool to them, then, then that's a great day. Those things are the best bait stealers in the world. Not that got time. Him. Here, Reed, we got, we got him. him. Check this thing out, Hannah. Buddy. He's a big one. Woo. Awesome. Come back here, right here. Good job, Jump man. Up. I gave up on that thing. Do you want him? 
No, he's not too strong. You can do it. He's a strong fish, but you can oh, do it. Oh, wow. Okay. I gave up on that thing, Ready? man. He real, just real, kept real, taking real. my bait. He's all muscle back there. Okay. Crazy fish. Real fast, real fast. Okay, pull up, and now real fast. Ready? Real fast. Only on the way down. Remember, we pull up. Now, don't. It's the fish's turn to pull. You let him pull. All right, now your turn to reel. Reel, 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 reel. Real fast. Okay, now pull up. Oh, he got off. Got off? He That's go. okay. That's all right. That's a cool he fish. Did good. He was strong, wasn't he? Hey, let's <laughs> ease down job. through here just a little bit further. Good job. Hannah, can you raise up the power pole? You did good. Having a functional trolling motor has become absolutely critical to our daily fishing. And one of the weak links in a trolling motor can be the prop. Lots of times when I've been out there, we've actually had the prop either break by hitting something hard like a rock, or even had the, the prop spin off while we're out fishing. That leaves us without a trolling motor all day long and can really hurt our day of fishing. And one of the key elements we've learned is to always have a spare prop and a spare cotter pin with you just in case you actually break the prop or it spins off. And when you go to change the prop, this is a real key key. If you do put a new prop on while you're out there, be very careful as you take off this, this screw, be very careful as you take the prop off not to lose that cotter pin. As this prop sometimes pulls off, there's a little cotter pin right inside and you've got to be very careful because that cotter pin does come out. And if you lose this cotter pin, even your spare prop does you no good at all. And when you're putting that prop on or off, be very careful this cotter pin not to lose it. You want to put that uh, new cotter pin in, line it up right in the middle so it fits in the groove of your spare prop like that. It's right in that groove. Put it right in the middle there. And then take your nut, tighten her down. And when you get it on there, make sure to use your pliers or something to really torque it down there. To have it very firm on there, real tight. Nice half turn tight. That way that prop will not come off. Having the prop on properly so it won't spin off is a major thing. And another tip is not to run the trolling motor in reverse a lot. It seems like that might loosen this nut and can cause that prop to spin off. So instead of uh, always running the, the prop in reverse, if we want to go backwards, we'll usually turn the motor around and actually go backwards, um, running it in reverse very sparingly. But uh, always bring a spare prop, always have a spare cotter pin, and that can absolutely save your day of fishing. He's right on the surface. He's going to come up again. Right there. See him? Watch. Boom! There he is. Isn't that cool? You want to go swimming with him? Yeah. But once it got hot, especially wearing those life jackets, that's the other thing, is, is the life jackets are, are hot. So, you know, just getting out away from the trees, um, and, and we want we needed to have action, we need to have it fast. And so that was the time, you know, it's like, hey, let's go out to a little patch reef. The, the weather was beautiful. It was calm. We could take the bay boat and shoot out there about three or four miles off, off the beach and, and get on one of these 20-foot patch reefs. And um, it was such a neat experience to have middle of the day, sun's up high, it, it just beautiful, clear water. Well, as soon as we stopped, it was just like an aquarium. I and mean, we could yep. look, look down in there, drop the anchor, and, 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 and just immediately look over. And I'm showing Hannah, look, Hannah, see the fish on the bottom? She's like, wow, you know, it's just yeah, a like, big aquarium. Wow. Come on, Reed. There's a group Good, on Hannah. There. What do you have? Is it something different? Whoa. What does she got? That's okay. It just reeled backwards there for a second. Real on this. There's a group on there. Reel. You're doing great, sweetie. Two, one go. of the three that you reel. get to get to catch. Real, buddy, real. Real. Look at that one, Reed. There you go. It's Goliath. He's got a grouper. Okay, we got one grouper. What does Hannah have? What does Hannah have? There he is. It's a snapper. Reed's favorite fish is a, is a grouper. I don't know why, and I, just the word or something. He likes saying grouper. Yeah, that was kind of cool to, to get out there and, you know, Patrick would be able to catch catch some of his favorites. And, you know, it was kind of neat just to be able to, you know, you were on the back there just, just flatlining out there, catching the yellowtails and the snappers on the top. And, and I was just dropping a piece of ballyhoo down on the bottom. It's such a nice type of fishing for the kids because you got spash action. They can see the fish in the water. Um, they don't have to have, have a lot of skills literally. Just open the bale, drop down, close the bale as soon as it hits the bottom, and, and, and they're getting a bite. 
it's definitely uh, uh, something to, to be thinking about is that you don't want to go for a fish that's too big for the kid because then it'll be a traumatic experience. All of a sudden, you know, the line cuts their finger or it rips the rod out of their hand or something, then they're scared of it. So tailor the species, tailor the size to, you know, the strength and, and attention span and experience level of the kid. That's how, you, that's how you do it. Oh, this is a cool one. This is a trigger fish. Wow, you've never seen one of these before. Show them how that works. Hannah, look at this one. Look at this one. This is a funny looking fish here. Show them how the trigger look, works. Look at this, Reed. It's called a trigger fish. You know, like a trigger on a gun? Look, look at this. You can push that back all you want, and that's it, not going it, it, backwards. It won't go down. And then what, you push it in here, right? Yep, push that. Push that, that in. trigger. No, 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 oh, yeah, go. look at that. You push on that trigger, and it goes down. See that? Push it up and let him push on it. Oh, you want to try to push on it? OK, here, try. Here, Use buddy. See, try to push this down real hard. That won't go. Push real hard, real hard. Now push nope. the trigger. Now push this one. And go like this. See that? You want to try it like that? Try the little one. Oh, yeah. Boom. You made it work. Very good, good job. Reed. Good it was job. a cool day to be able to, you know, just go out for a few hours, run around, and do all these different things, too. We were able to, in a few hours, we were able to fish a little wreck, fish near the mangroves, and then shoot out to a patch reef and be back, you know, b b before lunch. And that's important, you know. It's important to get the kids out and, and, and stay within their attention span. That's, that's really the, the key to it. Bye-bye, triggerfish. Good job. Give me five. Whether you're going out fishing for the day, on a 10-day expedition, or just down to the ball field for, for the afternoon, there's some tips that you can use to keep the contents of your cooler colder longer. Now, one of the things that, that I like is to find a cooler with a maximum amount of insulation in the side walls and in the lid. I found these Yeti coolers and they have an amazing amount of insulation. Now, this is going to be one of the best things that will help you to keep the ice in your cooler longer. But no matter what kind of cooler you have, one of the first things that you need to do is think about where you're storing your cooler and how you prepare it before you even get out and go fishing. A lot of people will store their cooler out in the hot sun and that's fine, but you have to realize that the lid and the side walls are hot. They're as hot as the outside air. So what you want to do is begin by cooling the cooler down. And you can do that, that's as easy as just throwing a sacrificial bag of ice in the cooler and letting that melt and cooling down the side walls and lid. Or you can bring it inside overnight what the pros will do on a big trip, like a 10-day expedition, is actually take the cooler into the deep freeze, a walk-in freeze, if, if that's available, and we'll cool the cooler down all the way down to freezing temperatures. Now, once you've got your cooler prepared, whether you've cooled it down with a bag of ice or brought it into the air conditioning or in the deep freeze, the second thing that you want to do is to think about what you're going to put in it. Are the contents that you're going to put in, are they already cold? If not, Put them in the refrigerator overnight, whether it's beer, soda, water. If you put a hot six pack of soda in your cooler and throw a bag of ice on top of it, it's gonna take the energy from that whole bag of ice to cool that down to where the temperature that you're gonna want it. So if you can begin with the cooler contents cold, that's gonna be a huge advantage. The next thing you wanna do is pay attention to the quality of ice that you're buying. A lot of places will have both inside ice and outside ice, or maybe there's an ice machine that's not used as much. Look around, open it up, find a nice bag of ice where the ice is, is in a good shape and dry. That ice is much, much colder. Buy that ice and pack your cooler with that ice. So once you've got your cooler cold, your contents cold, and you've filled it up, you want to make sure that you eliminate as much air space in the cooler as possible. So fill it up with ice, fill it up with more contents, fill it up with whatever you can and eliminate all dead air space in the cooler. On a good cooler, you're gonna have latches. I also like a cooler that's got a gasket. I also keep the drain plug closed and I don't drain the water out. As you open the drain plug, that's allowing warm air into the cooler. So these are extreme tips from the pros about how to keep your cooler colder longer. But I can promise you that if you use them like I've told you, you're going to be able to extend the life of your ice in the cooler two to three times beyond what you're currently doing if you're not using these tips. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Finor, legendary tackle since 1933. The Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. 
Yeti coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Motor guide, never stop. By Sirius Marine Weather, satellite weather direct to your boat. And by Under Armour, King Sailfish Mounts, Staybill, Scott Fly Rods, and Plano. Do you like to go fishing with, with, with Daddy? And Mr. Tom? And Hannah? That's good. We'll have to do that more often. What fish would you catch if you could catch one fish in the entire ocean? I don't know. What about you, Reader? Not <laughs> Gooper. Grouper. Cooper. So you did catch a grouper, didn't you? What, what kind of fish did we catch? We caught grouper. What else did we catch? Remember? Remember any of the other fish we caught, Hannah? Snapper. There you go. Good one. Well, I like fishing with the kids. I like taking you out on the boat, showing you some cool stuff, and I love it that you have a good time, no matter what that is that you do. If you uh, like playing the bait well, if you like to catch the fish, if you like to hook them up, I like to see you learn about it, and it's, it's fun. It's fun for all of us, and I'm glad you like it because we can go fishing a lot more in your life. Accommodations provided by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. All the fun of the Florida Keys in one island resort. Closed captioning provided by Sperry Topsider, a passion for the sea.